Good morning, students. Today, I welcome you all to the second session of the Rat Trap, wherein I will be talking about the NCRT text. In the first session, I was talking about the summary, paraphrasing, and also about the author. I also introduced the characters too, and I was telling you all that human beings get trapped because they cannot control their greed and avarice. Avarice is greed only. So in life, you have such kind of challenging situations when you're not able to hold to your emotions and you become a victim of your own weakness. But if you have a friend, a companion who holds your hand and with his or her sheer love, care, sympathy, empathy brings you back to life, then it becomes a lesson for life. Similarly, in this story also, that's what happened. Pedler was not able to hold his own emotions. He was not able to control his fancy and hence he grabbed a thing which he paid for later. So we get to see how a girl comes into his life and uh, tries to change him by her goodness. So with love and understanding, you can change a person upside down. With sheer understanding, empathy and sympathy, you can do magic or you can bring in the elements of magic in someone's life. That's what we are going to discuss and now I'll go to uh, show the slides and explain you the lesson. I request you all to have a pencil in your Yesterday hand. Yesterday I was telling you all that uh, the peddler compares the whole world to be a rat trap because a rat gets lured towards cheese and pork. Similarly, he also uh, thought that every human being gets lured towards his temptations and he becomes a victim of it. Once you enter the cage as a rat, you'll never be able to come out of it. You're trapped for life. That's what he thinks. So now I proceed. No one can imagine how sad and monotonous life can appear to such a vagabond. Monotonous is boring. There's no excitement. There's no thrill in it. Vagabond means somebody who roams around here and there without uh, any permanent address, who plods along the road, plodders walk slowly along the ro road with unsteady step, left to his own meditations. Obviously, he was uh, left to his uh, own uh, understanding and meditation means his own thought process. One day, obviously, he thought that he has fallen into the line that the whole world is a big rat trap. It had never existed for him. This is what I did that day. It offered riches and joy, shelter and food, heat and clothing, exactly as the rat trap offered cheese and pork. So I think this slide I've already discussed with you, wherein, wherein the same thing I'll repeat quickly, that the whole world is a big rat trap and we all get lured towards something or the other, just like a rat gets lured inside a cage when he looks uh, at the pork and the cheese inside it and that rat is trapped forever in that cage. Similarly, we humans also fall a victim, fall a prey to such luring situations and circumstances for which we have to pay throughout life. The world had, of course, never been very kind to him. So it gave him unwanted joy to think ill of it. So obviously this world has been very, very cruel to him and he has not got anything good from the world. So it gave him unwanted means it gave him immense joy to think ill of it. It gave him immense happiness to think anything bad about the world in this way. It became a cherished pastime of his. It was a favorite pastime of his to think bad about the world during many dreary plottings. Dreary is dreamy plottings. That is all his own thought process wherein he used to think and uh, create his own imagination and everything against the world. To think of people he knew who had led themselves to be caught in the dangerous snare. And he also imagined people whom he knew and then that uh, they are trapped into something which is very very dangerous. Snare is again a trap. And of others who were still circling around the bed. All those people who are moving around the bed off and on okay and we human beings know that this is not okay for us but we still keep roaming around it and victimize ourselves knowing the fact what is going to be the outcome one dark evening as he was trudging along the road again trudging is walking along the road he caught sight of a little gray cottage by the roadside and he knocked on the door to ask shelter for the night nor was he refused so we just got to see that it gave him immense pleasure to think ill about the world and also what whomsoever he knew 
he used to think bad about them he used to think all uh, dangerous situations for these people and that gave him immense pleasure in his own creation and thought process that I, whatever he thought about not only that while walking through the road he wanted help from an old man who will be a crop to will just get to see and he wanted help because he wanted to reside there for the night it was cold outside and he was not refused the old man welcomed him and he was given shelter for the night let's see what happens instead of the sore faces which ordinarily met him the owner who was an old man without wife or child was happy to get someone to talk in his loneliness immediately he put the porridge pot on the fire and gave him supper so then obviously this man was extremely happy to receive a guest because he used to stay without his wife and child and he was very lonely so he was finally very happy to get somebody to share and talk to so immediately he um, put up that porridge pot porridge is some sort of a soup which these people have and um, he had put up that pot quickly and gave him supper supper is dinner then he carved off such a big slice from his tobacco roll carved off his take out that it was enough both for the stranger's pipe and his own and finally he got out an old pack of cards and played jollus jollus is a card game with his guest until bedtime so obviously what he did was gave him food that is porridge and then gave him that tobacco roll and finally they both sat together and they were playing a card game the name of the card game was jollus so he was extremely happy to greet his guest that's what we get to see the old man was just as generous with his confidences as with his porridge and tobacco so he was very very kind and he was very generous and that's what we get to see he offered him food dinner and for the peddler it was quite strange because he was not greeted by anybody like that the guest was informed at once that his days of prosperity his host had been a crofter at ramzo iron works and had worked on the land so obviously he was a crofter croft means land and a person who works on that land is a crofter so he was a farmer like in our country we will call him now that he was no longer able to do day labor it was his cow which supported him yes that bossy was extraordinary and she could give milk for the creamery every day creamery is a place where you go and sell off your dairy products so this man used to go and sell the milk given by his cow and that's what was the source of his livelihood and last month he had received all of 30 kroner in payment so finally obviously after selling that kind of milk given by the cow he got 30 kroner kroner is currency a uh, sweden currency so that's what he used to get it so students we got to see that this man that is the peddler was treated very well by the crofter crofter i would like to repeat croft means land and a person who works on the land is known to be a crofter so he was very happy to greet the peddler because he was a very lonely man and finally they had a very settled time why because he was given porridge by the crofter and they played a card game the name of the card game was jollus wherein he was telling that i was a crofter once upon a time but today my source of income is through this cow wherein i go and sell milk at the creamery creamery is a place where you go and sell your dairy products and that's how i fetch money that's how i get money and i got 30 krona krona is a swedish currency like we have rupees they have krona i hope this is clear the stranger must have seemed incredulous for the old man got up and went to the window took out a leather pouch which hung on a nail in the very window frame and picked out three wrinkled 10 krona bills these he held up before the eyes of his guest nodding knowingly and then stuffed them back into the pouch the next day both men got up in good season the crofter was in a hurry to milk his cow and the other man probably thought he should not stay in bed when the head of the house had gotten up they left the cottage at the same time the crofter locked the door and put the key in his pocket the man with the rag traps said goodbye and thank you and thereupon each went his own way so we get to see the stranger must have felt incredulous the word incredulous means when you are unable to believe something 
for a man who was in rags who did not know what to eat what to wear he was you know in a hand to mouth condition he has never seen that kind of money so when he saw those 30 kroners he was unable to believe his eyes but when this man showed him he saw those uh, leather pouch contained 30 kroner and the crafter showed him the money he was happy to see it but no reaction at all next morning they decided that they, they will leave the house the crafter was in a hurry because he had to milk his cow and uh, the peddler thought it is not right to stay back at home when the owner is not there so they left the house both of them together at the same time but they both went in two different directions both of them that is the crafter the peddler they left in different directions and we really need to understand that the crafter showed him the amount of money that he got after selling the milk in the creamery which was quite strange why will you show your own amount of money to a stranger the answer to this is when you don't have anybody to share and you are happy about something like this man was living all alone he did not have his wife and child and also there is one more explanation that he wanted to test him he wanted to check whether he was you know trustworthy or not or he falls a prey to his own greed let's see that but half an hour later the rat trap peddler stood again before the door he did not try to put in however he only went up to the window smashed a pane stuck in his hand and got hold of the pouch with his, with a 30 kroner he took the money and thrust it into his own pocket then he hung the leather pouch very carefully back in its place and went away as he walked along with the money in his pocket he felt quite pleased with his smartness he realized of course that at first he dared not continue on the public highway but must turn off the road into the woods during the first hours this caused him no difficulty as we can see he was not able to control his greed he was not able to control his own uh, fantasy of grabbing the money so what he did was he came back again smashed his broke the window pane took that leather pouch took the money grabbed the money and ran away so while he did that he did not take the public highway because he thought that it is easy to be caught because people will notice you so he thought he'll walk through the forest obviously in the morning hours it's easy to go the go by the forest but as the night proceeds as the night falls it is very diffi- difficult to follow your i mean uh, to search your way through the forest and let's see what happens next later in the day it became worse for it was a big and confusing forest which had gotten into he tried to be sure to walk in a definite direction but the path twisted back and forth so strangely he walked and walked without coming to the end of the forest and finally he realized that he had only been sorry seen walking around the same path of the forest for at once he recalled his thoughts about the world and the rat trap now his own turn had come he had let himself be fooled by a bait and he had been caught the whole forest with its trunk and branches its thickets and fallen logs closed in upon him like an impenetrable prison from which he could not escape so as he started moving obviously this forest was a big and confusing forest and he could not find a way out so he was moving in the same path same direction off and on again and again and then finally an amusing thought came into his head that yes as i thought the whole world is a rat trap and we all run after baits i have been a victim of my own feeling i mean i was not able to control my greed hence i am also a victim of it i have also become just just like a rat who runs after the pork and cheese here he was not able to control his greed he was not able to control his whims and fancy when he saw that amount of money and hence he was trapped in it the whole forest if you see the last line the whole forest with its trunks and branches its thickets and fallen logs closed in upon him like an impenetrable prison so that that forest obviously has different types of branches trunks shrubs trees and all these have become just like an impenetrable means something that you cannot pass through so it has become like a prison where he could not escape at all so for him it was very difficult and he thinks that i have become a victim of my own theory as we continue that he has become his own 
victim the thought that was amusing for him the pain induced for others the thought of others being in pain gave him a lot of pleasure so now he has become a victim of his own thought process wherein he also got lured and now he is roaming in the forest with aimlessly without knowing from where he could escape it was late in december darkness was already descending upon over the forest this increasing the danger and increased also his gloom and despair that means obviously it was uh, december as you know winters it becomes dark quickly and evenings are more intense so as he was moving as he was getting into the descending means moving into the forest this increased the danger it was quite dangerous to move at that part of time and it increased gloom increased means obviously sorry sadness and despair that is his sadness of not being able to move out of it and his gloominess because he was now scared he was not able to understand how to go about it how to move out of it so he was sinking in his own gloom finally he saw no way out so now he could not come out of it he could not find the way out and uh, he sank down on the ground tired to death obviously he has been roaming around for the whole day he has been trying to find a way he was not able to so he was very very tired and he dropped down because he was really tired and scared also thinking that his last moment had come since he was not able to come out of it he thinks that his last moments have come he will not be able to move out of the forest and hence he will die there only but just as he laid his head on the ground he heard a sound a hard regular thumping so the moment he had banged his head on the ground he heard somebody banging on the iron obviously that area was of iron mills so he heard a loud thumping sound loud banging sound there was no doubt as to what that was he raised himself those are the hammer strokes from an iron mill so he was so happy to hear that somebody is around and he could make out that this is a stroke in some iron mill so he started walking again thinking that he will find a way to rescue himself there must be people near nearby he summoned all his strength so he had that assurance that i am sure somebody must be around so he gathered summoned his gathered all his strength got up and staggered in the direction of staggered is walked in the direction of the sound he gathered all his courage and started walking the sound okay the ramzo iron works which are now closed down were not so long ago a large plant with smelter rolling mill and forge in the summer time long lines of heavily loaded barges and scows slid down the canal which led to a large indian lake so now obviously right ramzo iron work once upon a time was a very big mill and it was known for smeltering you must be knowing smeltering is all melting the iron and you know they were to making big barges barges are narrow thin boats scows that type of boats they used to make that which used to slip down the canal which led to a large inland lake and in winter time the roads near the mill were black from all the coal dust which shifted down from the big charcoal crates so obviously they were well known uh, iron work and they were into uh, business they were into uh, making those boats barges and scows and people knew and because of the dust from the mill the roads were all covered with the coal dust during one of the long dark evening just before christmas the master smith and his helper sat in the dark forge near the surface waiting for the pig iron which had been put in the fire to be ready to put on the anvil and will is mouth of the furnace every now and then one of them got up to stir the glowing mass with a long iron bar returning in a few moments dripping with perspiration though as was the custom he was nothing a long shirt and a pair of wooden shoes all the time there were many sounds to be heard in the forge see that he has uh, seen this ramzo iron mill wherein people were working and this mill was once upon a time a well known uh, mill where they were busy making barges and scows they were type of boats that they made and uh, they were well known in the industry because of the work that they did the entire roads were all covered with coal uh, dust so uh, he goes in there and uh, let's see what happens in the next segment i'll explain it to you in the third part of the story but i request you all to go through it the first was obviously he was going through the forest and he was uh, building up his own uh, imagination he was cursing the human human 
uh, kind of mankind and he uh, got amused by thinking ill of the world about the world second he gets into the crofter's house and you know what he did he robbed his money and third now he enters the iron mill so that's the sequence of the story i hope you have understood if not please do get back to me thank you